What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Mental Health Movement Podcast, Voice for the Voiceless. I am your host, Chris. Today, we have a very special episode with a special guest um, who I'm going to bring in here in a second. But today, we're going to talk about the celebration of life. Uh, you know, basically, kind of want to start from when we were kids to where we're at now as adults, uh, just kind of like talk about birthdays and the aspect of why some people don't like celebrating birthdays, why I celebrate every single day um, of my life, you know, just earn every single day. Um, please help me welcome Vince. Vince, how you doing, buddy? Doing good, brother. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Uh, really glad that you came on here and uh, glad I came up with the topic idea because I really wasn't sure what we were going to record on, uh, being as though things were kind of thrown for a whirl on my recording schedule. But uh, happy that you came on and super grateful. So thank you again. Yes, sir. Um, so I just kind of want to, you know, topic of discussion is birthdays. You know, it's a uh, as as adults as men, you know, it's just kind of like we're we're in a society where most people our age just don't really care about birthdays quite frankly it's just like oh it's just another day i'm just turning this age whatever and then you have that fear aspect of uh oh my god i'm turning 30 this year oh my god i'm turning 31 this year you know whatever it is and i kind of did something similar to this last year where i talked about why people feel the way way that they do um this year i want to run it back but i i want to have somebody else's perspective on it um instead of just uh, giving details on why people feel the way that they feel. So I guess let's just start from when we were kids, man. Like, what's your earliest memory uh, of a birthday party? Like, did you ever have a birthday party that ever stuck out to you, like, any age? Man, I think I think for me, one of the ones that stuck out, so back in Tucson, there's this ice skating rink, and it's fucking – we weird to have one middle of fucking Arizona, but they had one indoor. Uh, I think I was like six or seven at the time, and we had, they had gotten this big ass fucking birthday party together. Went there, went to the ice skating rink, and we just you know skated, fucking played around on the ice for hours, and just fucked off for a while. That's pretty much my earliest recollection of birthday parties. And I know I had them before that, but it's like didn't really stick out as much. I mean, there was like skate country where you'd go roller skating and shit or, you know, pool party at the house or whatever. But that one was probably for the time that I was and for the age that I was, was probably the most fun that I had had at that time. Yeah, so um, one of my uh, guests that I had on here uh, a couple episodes ago was was Sydney. Um, she she was the one that covers like childhood trauma and stuff, and you know just trying to help people recover from from that said trauma. She had posted something on her Instagram um, feed that says, "What's your uh, fond- fondest childhood memory?" And I sat there thinking about it before I responded to her. I'm like, honestly, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you what my fondest memories were as a kid because of my parents. And, you know, again, this isn't me trashing their parental style. And, you know, I was their firstborn. So it's just kind of they're figuring shit out with with me. And honestly, I was I was a project kid, if we're being honest. And unfortunately, that came with its own trials and tribulations of, you know, not knowing how to discipline a kid properly, uh, them kind of like unintentionally vomiting their childhood trauma on onto me and you know i think the earliest memory i have myself which is kind of funny you mentioned ice skating was me it was a a roller uh, a roller blading uh arena roller skate arena it was astro skate um we used to do like little pizza parties in there um invite maybe like one or two friends uh, if that i mean I, I don't think I have any childhood friends that I talk to still to this day. Uh, maybe maybe Nicole, the one I just recorded with, Nicole and Victoria. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's hard it's hard digging up uh, things when you're a kid because none of it really stuck out. You know what I mean? And not to say that my my childhood was completely terrible because it, it wasn't, but 
I remember the arguments. I remember the fighting more than I remember hanging out with my friends. Like, I, I just remember when PlayStation 1 first came around, I literally uh, did nothing but game from the day that PlayStation 1 came out to, mm -hmm. to today, to being 31 years old. I, I mean, that's my way of escaping the shit that was going on, and that's my way of escaping it now. And it's uh, it's it's funny how how young you can start developing those coping tools without it being told being uh, told to you that you're coping from shit that's going on around you. Um, yeah. And you know, of course, our parents always try to get us to go outside and uh, hang out with our friends and stuff. And now it's just like we're all inside and don't have any friends to go out with. You know what I mean? Man, I was grounded more than I was able to go outside right. like i guarantee for about half to three quarters of my high school years i was grounded like i wasn't allowed to do shit and my parents didn't like my friends that i had my dad did he because he had his own you know friends that they had different views and shit but my stepmom she did not she didn't like any of them she didn't think they were good enough she didn't think you know and i just you know started hanging out with a guy i went to high school with and uh when I got back, like we regularly hang out and shit. And I told him, I was like, look, man, I was like your family. I was like, y'all, y'all kind of helped me out through a lot of shit. He's like, yeah, I know. He's like, we saw what you were going through. Cause his, I would go to his house and my stepmom would show up at his house and his mom would answer the door and she'd be like, where's Vince? And his mom would be like, he's not here. Knowing damn well, I'm sitting inside his fucking room. But she's like, he's not here. She's like, well, that's his bike. And his mom would be like, I just bought that for my son. That's not his bike. So they would always, you know, protect me and shit on that. Crazy shit. Yeah. And, um, you know, my my brother and, and sister um, and, and my birthday all kind of fall within like months of each other. So when my sister's in May, my brother's in July and I'm, I'm in August. So when my sister's birthday is around, it's towards the end of school. Cameron's is right in the middle of summer. Mine is literally right before we went to went back to school. Yeah. So it was always kind of preparing to go back to school kind of thing. And back to school disguised as, oh, here's your birthday present. Here's some clothes. Just kidding. That's school clothes. Um, and, I, and I don't really remember anything outside of going to Astro Skate. Um, to really say that a birthday as a child really stuck out to me. Like, uh, I remember they used to read like um, birthdays when we were in school, when we were going back to school and stuff. And my birthday is the beginning of August. So like right there when school started, my birthday would just barely fall under the line of not being announced because it was in the middle of, or the end of summer. Um, and I just always felt like I was left out because my name was never read on the on a program or anything like that. Um, I think the the last birth well not the last birthday um, the birthday that sticks out to me the most is my twenty first birthday. Um, that was the first time I ever got drunk to the point of it being chaotic. Like <laughs> so. I apparently took my pants off at the beach. Um, I stole a construction sign and put it in my car. Um, I got dropped in the middle of uh, an Applebee's parking lot because I was so drunk. Um, it was it was a night that I it was the best night I'd never remembered. Um, I, I remember my friends telling me the day after how crazy I was drunk, and I haven't gotten drunk since. And that was ten years ago now. Um, that was the one and only time I've ever been trashed, like ever. And <clears throat> to this day, there's things about that day. Uh, when I look back at pictures, it's just like, Jesus Christ. Like that was the biggest celebration I ever had, uh, up to that point. And before that I you know 18 19 20 like none of that I, I don't remember having a birthday that ever really stuck out to me um going through like high school yourself and going to like when we started turning into uh quote-unquote legal adults 
how did you view birthdays versus how you view birthdays now? Like, has it changed at all? Has it um, given you a different perspective on life now that you have your own kids? So, you know, going through high school and shit, I don't really remember having any parties or anything. Uh, you know, we would go out to eat. That would be what we would go do. And, um, you know, my dad passed 2009 right before school got out. So that kind of threw a whole damper on the summer. You know, my birthday's in August. Uh, didn't really do anything for that. Just kind of got back into school and football and shit just to keep my mind off shit. So I really didn't celebrate then. Uh, the following year, I got shot right before school got out, right before graduation. And I was still recovering from that when my birthday came around. So I didn't really celebrate. Um, then I ended up moving to Texas because I went down this little downward spiral. You know, had some friends out there, moved in with them. Didn't really do anything because then I, you know, got in trouble, got on probation, did that whole thing. Uh, I did celebrate my 21st, which I probably shouldn't have because I was on probation. I got completely fucking trashed. And, but I made it back to the house, made it back without, you know, anything going down. Friend gave me a ride, didn't get in trouble. Uh, did a couple years of like not doing shit, staying low. Uh, and then Clarissa and I, you know, we were hanging out and shit. She was my best friend back in Texas. One of my best friends back in Texas. And we would always throw a joint birthday parties because mine is August 26th and hers was August 29th. So we would just get together and throw a big ass rager and party for that. Uh, nothing more than just fucking drunken debauchery, but I mean, it was a, it was a celebration of it. And then when she passed is when I kind of just stopped celebrating it like I kind of just didn't really get into it anymore because the person that I was celebrating with when I was you know hanging out and shit she was gone so and she died she actually died six days before my birthday and then got laid to rest on my birthday so the day that she got laid to rest we went to Buffalo Wild Wings and I had been working my ass off and I had a good chunk of change set up that we just got completely sloshed at Buffalo Wild Wings and ended that out like that. And since then, I really hadn't put much thought into it. Like people finding gifts and shit, which I'm not a big gift person. Like there's more things to spend your money on. Like if you have kids, spend it on them. Like I'd rather you fucking get them something than fucking buy me something. You know, fucking let's go do something instead of buying me something. Because that time, that fucking, that time that you spend with somebody, those memories that you have, that's a lot better than a gift. It's a, it's a, a, a longer lasting gift, really. And this year is going to be the first year that I actually have done like a party type thing, cookout party since Clarissa passed and it's going to be different. We're going to do a little barbecue type shit, get everybody together, just hang out and have a good time. But having kids and all that, I'm, I lean more towards the, I don't like gifts. Uh, gifts are cool. You know, if you're thinking of somebody when you're like, passing through somewhere and you're like, oh shit, that looks dope. I think so-and-so would like this. Let me get that. Not just a, oh shit, it's your birthday. Let me buy you this fucking $200 thing that you don't need. You know? Right. And for like, when people ask me about my kids and shit, it's, it's kind of a, it's a soft spot because I'm like, no, I, I'd rather like, if you want to fucking do something for them, like take them to a museum, go take them out to the park, go take them fishing, go take them hunting, like, create some memories don't fucking overload with material shit right that's just my th thought process on it though 
Yeah, and and I feel like you know it's it's definitely important to make memories as opposed to uh, materialistic things, like you said. And and it's interesting that you know, uh, and I kind of say say the same thing around Christmas. Like I'm the only person that I know besides maybe my grandmother that still does cards, like birthday cards, Christmas cards. And, yeah. Uh, my buddy Caleb said that's what he's like. I think you're the only person that I know that gives cards. And I said, you know, I feel like when you're when you're giving out cards, you're you know you're giving a, a piece of yourself to that person. Like you know, I will take the time to write out Christmas cards to people and you know say something nice about them or say something kind or say I see you in whatever way that uh, I feel like writing in that card. Um, I feel like it, it's kind of the same when it comes to celebrating uh, somebody's birthday is, you know, create that memory with somebody, uh, you know, like you said, uh, you would rather somebody take your kids to, to go somewhere opposed to uh, buying them whatever. And, and I can appreciate that. Um, I feel like there's nothing wrong with buying a gift when they're like young enough to wear uh I guess they can't really tell the difference between going to a museum and receiving a gift kind of thing. Like, you know, uh, when they're like young, but like when they start getting to a point where they can have conversations with you and every, all those conversations, you know, make sense. And there's understanding between the two of you. Then that's the point of, you know, you take them to museums, take them fishing, whatever. And I feel it's important to make memories and in, in any cost. Cause you know, for me personally, um, and I, and I live by by these simple words that I heard from John Cena, um, who everybody who actually who knows me, um, he is my hero. He's my favorite human being on the planet. And he says, earn every day. And I feel like when I hear those words to me, it's, you know, uh, by the end of the day, when you're laying down to go to sleep, did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish for that day? Did you lay around and do nothing all day and have a non-productive day? Great. You succeeded. Did you do all the things that you were going to do in the house that you said you were going to do? Great. You you succeeded. You can go to sleep. Um, I feel like when your birthdays start coming around and going back to when you lost your dad and when you lost Clarissa, um, I feel like grief is is something that when it hits you in certain ways, whether it's around your birthday, whether it's the holidays that you used to spend with that person, I feel like it makes you appreciate uh, every birthday that much more and every day that you're given the opportunity to, I guess, essentially do more for yourself and uh, the circle that you present yourself in. Um, when Amy first, when, when she passed away in 2020, um, it was about uh, just about a month before my birthday and Santi passed away a couple of days after my birthday. So essentially like your situation with, with your dad and with uh, Clarissa um, just kind of hand in hand with, with each other around your birthday and around, you know, whatever important events you had uh, going on in your life at the time. And you start teaching yourself that, uh, you know, you got to be numb because you don't want to feel anything without that person, without them celebrating the birthday with you. Like having the joint birthday thing um, had to have been the hardest thing in the world when you couldn't do that anymore. And like you said, you essentially stayed mentally numb to the fact that it was your birthday and you didn't celebrate it um, or quote unquote celebrate it um, like you're going to this year. And and I and I wonder, um, has it gotten to the point where you've appreciated every birthday that you get now since she passed away, since your dad passed away? Yeah, I think now. Obviously, I was in a bad headspace there for a while. I still kind of yeah. am, to a degree. But uh, now. I find myself more in a position that there are people that I actually want to celebrate and do things around. I got my kids. Uh, I got all my friends and shit back here in Arizona that I hadn't been around in so long that when I got back, it was just like 
like no time to pass fucking oh shit you're back hell yeah let's get together let's like let's hang out let's you know catch up on fucking 13 years of not being around and uh i don't know it it takes me back to a time where before everything went you know sideways and shit and it's a little more comforting in that aspect because these are people that like I would fight for. Like I, I got their back 100%. Like you, like fucking these, my friends out here, fucking now it's just, I'm at a point where like, there are people that I do actually want to, you know, spend time and fucking celebrate with and finally got to that point. Right. Whereas and, it was good. Oh, go I was I was just gonna say, um, were those friends around when your when your dad passed away, or did you meet them after that? So, my high school buddy John, he's the one who his mom would you know cut up for me and be like, "Yo, he's not here." Um, so he was around definitely before Patty and Duncan. Patty, actually, because Duncan came along after I was in Texas. They're married. Patty and I worked together, like, right after my dad had passed, or a year or two after my dad had passed. It was right after I got shot, because I started working at this place. And um, so she's been there, you know, since day one. And then when I moved to Texas and shit and got in my trouble, like, she was the one that I called, and I was like, hey, you're not going to hear from me for you know, a couple years. So this is what went down. I'll reach out whenever I get back out, but yeah. Um, do you ever honor your, your dad or Clarissa? Um, you know, just, just in general, I mean, like, do you have like any kind of uh, ritual or like any kind of like day you set aside for either one of them to like kind of, in memory of so my dad was a big motorcycle rider that's right. where i get it from. uh he died on a motorcycle so normally around or not around but the day of um he actually just got put into the peace officers fallen memorial the fallen peace officers memorial in phoenix so he's his name is forever ingrained in that memorial up there. So what I normally do is I'll ride up there. I'll go, you know, spend a couple minutes with that. Take off, ride down to Tucson and go sit at his grave for a little bit. And then just ride around for the rest of the day because it's what he would have wanted. You know, we used to do memorial rides for him right after he passed. We'd ride down to Tombstone, eat, drink, have a a couple beers and then ride back. Uh, Clarissa, that little fucker giggles. Um, it never failed. Whenever I would go to a party and shit, I always had a handle of wild Turkey one Oh one. It's kind of where my nickname white trash came from because it's the same fucking initials. Uh, and for some reason I would yell out white trash is back but that's besides the point um <laughs> we would always just sit there and take shots of the wild turkey all night whenever we would drink or whatever she was drinking so normally on my birthday i'll just you know get a little bottle of wild turkey and take a couple shots to commemorate i i always feel like um when when either one of their days, whether it's Amy, whether it's Santi, um, when their days come around, I always find uh just doing those doing those little rituals that I have for them every time that uh their birthdays or whatever come by. I have that that balloon I like to light in the air for them and uh drink Amy's favorite uh Tennessee honey whiskey. Um and then with Santi, you know, um I've known Santi since high school we didn't start getting close until 
I moved back down to Florida when he uh, when he reached out to me uh, in 2018. And from there, you know, uh, we we always uh, bounce off of each other conversations. We he would learn we would learn a lot off of each other. You know, there was a lot of mental health related things that he was always wondering about. Like I remember one day he called me. He said, Chris, I'm not, uh, I needed to ask you something. And I'm not saying this to be funny, but like, what is what is being triggered? Because, you know, uh, there's obviously the political joke about triggering somebody. Right. And and I and he asked me, he's like, what what is what does it mean when uh, somebody's feeling triggered about something? And, and I told him, I said, well, you know, it's uh, it's it's trauma based. You know, it's uh, I know there's the political joke triggered and then there's the the trauma based triggers and uh, people who have gone through childhood stuff. Um, a trigger is like a mental landmine when you hit it. You know, some triggers are a lot worse than others, obviously, as you know. Um, and and every time I, I think of our conversations, that one sticks out the most to me because he would always tell me, like, oh, I talked about you in, in church today about all the great things. And I always update everybody in, in my group and everything of what you're doing. And uh, everybody in, in my church group is is rooting for you. I'm like, that's that's awesome, man. Like, and he knows I wasn't big on religion. Um, yeah. But all the time we would always, always connect on, on mental health related stuff. So like when I started this podcast and when the group started blowing up the way that it did, you know, uh, the podcast was my way of honoring Satsuma, you know, uh, he was, uh, one of the biggest cheerleaders for the group. You know, he was there seeing how much progress was being made. And, um, I remember the last time I physically saw him was a couple days after my birthday. Um, he was bringing back Mortal Kombat. And uh, it was the day that I bought, um, it was the day I bought a new shotgun. And I told him, I said, hey, do you, you want to see the shotgun? And uh, he's like, oh, you got a shotgun? Like, he was so excited, like a, like a kid in a, in a candy store kind of thing. And um, I, I handed it to him. You just see him standing in the doorway, just like holding it. He's a, he was a big guy just holding the shotgun on his arm and cocking it and like making like a like a zombie throw. He's like, come get some bitches. And uh, um that's that's my last memory of him, man. And the last like conversation I had with him was we were supposed to go to dinner the day that he passed away. And uh something came up where I had to cancel plans with him and I had to reschedule and I'm I'm grateful that the last words I said to him was I love you, bro. Like the very last thing that I said to him. Um, that call that I got the day when George told me he passed away was probably the worst call I've ever got in my life. Um, so I feel like when birthdays come around, you know, uh, post twenty first birthday, um, anything after my twenty first. Um, I tried to do everything I could to celebrate every single year because uh, tomorrow's never promised. You know, um, my birthday could happen. I could turn 31 and then not make it to day two of being 31. You know, and and I feel like so many people don't appreciate um, don't appreciate birthdays. And, you know, and I get it because much like Christmas, it just kind of turned into a hallmark type of thing where it has no meaning behind it you know it has no genuine emotion behind it because it's just like oh well for instance um uh the last podcast that i recorded with nicole um we were talking about uh having divorced parents and <laughs> you know on the on the surface it's it's great to go to two different um two different houses for birthdays right because you get double the presence quote unquote but um looking back at it now it was uh oh well i bought more presents than your dad or i did more than your dad kind of thing um and, and basically I, I just i wish that people would appreciate birthdays more than they do now um it's not a hallmark holiday it's it's a it's a it's a reset button on another 365 days yeah you know, it's it's a it's another chance to do better for yourself physically and emotionally yep um 
So as of as of today, like 2023, before you're getting ready to turn your next age, what what is the most important thing that you have learned? Um, I guess about yourself in terms of like celebrations. Man, I'm I'm with you on the aspect of like just celebrating because you don't know if the next day is your last. I mean, I work in a field that one wrong, if my head's not in the game, I can, I can die. Right. I, I worked on some shit the other day where a little sketchy, uh, didn't set some safety stuff up and they came out and was like, Hey man, you got to set that up. And I was like, look, man, uh, if I go today, I go, this isn't going to stop it. So that's my thing is now I'm just kind of like, I took it for granted for so long that now I'm, I'm at this point where at least, like you said, if today's my last day, did I, did I make the best of it? Did I impact the people that I should impact? Did I change anybody's life or did I just, barely make it through for myself right do you have any uh any birthdays that you remember where your parents were together with you and then like does it ever stick out like do you have any memory of that at all nah so my fa- my biological mom and my dad divorced when i was like one or two years old um my dad was a single dad till like i was 11 and then for the most part, I was always in trouble, so <laughs> I never could do it. Uh, it was more survival mode, honestly, than it was good shit. Right. Um, me, my parents being divorced at a really young age, I, I don't remember. I don't remember any any of my, any of my birthdays where they were together, like at all. Um, anything like childhood related stuff besides the bad shit I don't really remember too much of the good stuff because you know like I said when my brother was born um, and you know this isn't a knock at him so Cameron when you listen to this this isn't this isn't a knock at you at all but um, when he was born you know all the attention was was on him and that's how it was growing up um I, I mentioned it in a previous podcast that my mom used uh, me and my brother as weapons against each other. Um, and it created a lot of tension. It created a lot of arguments when we were kids. Um, and it's resulted into m- him and I not having the best relationship today. Um, yeah. We talked a lot more now that we don't live in the same house. And, uh, you know, uh, being adults and he, him having a relationship and me healing with through therapy and stuff. Um, him and I never had the best relationship growing up. I, I can't think of a time uh, that him and I, it was him and I against the world kind of thing. It was just more, we had divorced parents. He was four when, when they divorced, I was eight. So I I was in a position mentally where I thought everything was my fault. Because you know you're at that you're at that age, excuse me, and you don't understand you don't understand divorce, and it took time to understand what divorce even was. Um, because I wanted Christmases with them together, I wanted my birthdays with them together, and it just would never happen. Um, yeah. And then when my sister was born, um, it got even worse of uh, me just being completely ignored, and. And again, this isn't a knock on my siblings, but I was quite literally invisible when my sister was born and when my brother was born. And um, that came from my grandfather's mouth. He's like, I always noticed how your mom would treat you, opposed to how you would treat Cameron and Caleb. And you were always getting yelled at. You were always just kind of like berated and talked down to all the time. And yeah. I took it. I, I I took a lot of I took a lot of shit when I was a kid, man. Like, um, 
I think the the early not earliest um, one of the memories I have with one of the relationships uh, my mom was in was with my stepfather, quote unquote. Um, after my mom and dad got divorced, she didn't legally marry this guy, but they were married. I, I don't I don't know. Um, but I remember them getting to a really bad argument, and I walked out there and I yelled "stop" at the top of my lungs because they were yelling at each other. He pushed me as hard as he could, uh, and, I, and I landed on my bed. My head, my head hit the wall. Um, like I said, man, I, I took way too much shit as a kid, and I don't remember, I don't remember birthdays. I don't really remember holidays. Um, I think the, when it came to like Christmas time, again, it was just kind of like a. I I bought more than your dad or your dad didn't get you this so I couldn't get it blah 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 and it was just that mentality was like my whole life was yeah. uh you know it's your birthday I want to get you this but your dad didn't get it and I couldn't afford it blah 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 it was your dad your dad your dad um and my mom created this whole big thing of me being afraid of my father for whatever reason and it was always like you can't talk to him without judgment. Um, when my mom found out I was smoking weed at 14, she made me terrified of my dad saying how pissed off he was about it. And just a lot of shit, man. And I remember when my mom and dad found out my brother was smoking and it was the complete opposite reaction. My dad was so happy he had another kid that smoked weed. And it just there was so much of the mentality that was really shitty towards me and it didn't reflect onto my siblings. Yeah. I, I don't remember having like any big birthdays with my dad. I, I think half the time he forgot it was my birthday. Truthfully. Um, <laughs> my mom last year, uh, her and I's birthday is three days apart. She called me at the end of my birthday last year and she's like, uh, I was just calling and say happy birthday, and I, I didn't, I didn't get you a card. I didn't send you a card because I, and this is her words, exact words. I didn't get you a card, and and here's here's the fucked up sentence because I forgot it was your birthday. Our our birthday is three days apart. Three days. How do you forget a birthday that's anyway? Um, <laughs> you know how my relationship is with her. And most of my listeners do as well, so I don't need to get too deep into that. But um, most of our dinners, I think, like, when I was, like, early adult, um, we did together. And then she moved out of the state, and that stopped. Um, yeah, man, it was always about money with her. And, and I think that's why for a really long time I struggled celebrating birthdays, because it's just, like, money, 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 money. And this year, I me and Caleb booked a, a flight to go to North Carolina for a couple of days. Um, I'm doing it not only for myself, but I'm also doing it for Santi. I'm getting a tattoo for him uh, on his two years. My tattoo appointment is on his two years. So yeah, man, I feel like more people should celebrate their birthdays, should celebrate another chance to, be given the opportunity to celebrate that birthday you know what i mean like uh, and i know I, I realized i just said celebrate within like two words of each other but <laughs> you get what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. um how old are your kids again uh luca is turning four next month and otto will be turning two in december okay so they're both they're both fairly fairly young and close to each other in age um do you do you ever like do anything um special for them on their birthday like i know you said memories kind of thing like what was the best thing you've done with them uh, on their birthday so far so far honestly man um i haven't done much i've i was always the worker in the relationship so i was pulling three to four jobs Actually, not four, three, two to three jobs um, to make sure, you know, bills and shit were getting taken care of. Because 
all that shit. So honestly, I always worked. Um, this year, I'm going to try and get, try to take Luca to like the zoo. He loves the zoo. Um, we were going to go, they have a prickly pear festival on my birthday, which is August 26th. And I was going to take him to that, but middle of the summer in Arizona, having a four-year-old out in the heat all day is probably not a good idea. So yeah. I think I'll just take him to the zoo, hopefully, and go from there. Otto, um, his one-year birthday um, – was last December and you know the story between me and my ex were separated we're trying to go through the divorce and shit and she had just moved to Arizona in November of last year so I didn't get to spend any of that with him and then you know my stepmom passed so that pushed me moving out here a lot quicker so you know, it's uh, you touched on something pretty interesting that um, I kind of wanted to bring up now that I mentioned my father uh, not not remembering anything with my dad was the the provider, you know, the the guy who makes sure that food is on the table or that a cake was to be bought or that there's money in account to make sure that kid can have a birthday. It, you know, it's a perspective that I didn't realize that I needed to hear until you said that, because, you know, when, you know, you, I guess, technically speaking, you're a single, single dad, right? Single dad. Um, and then having to like be that provider and at the same time, try to be the loving and caring dad, not, not saying that you don't love and care for your kids. You you get what I'm saying when you say that. Um, but like, trying to be the loving and caring dad that celebrates everything with your kid with with your kids and uh making sure that they feel like you know how somebody's supposed to feel on their birthday like the whole day is about them and yeah. I, I i think it's it's interesting that we live in a society that doesn't acknowledge how hard it is for not only single fathers but just like fathers in general that have to be just a provider and can't always be the emotionally supportive dad either because uh, at the same time, because they're too busy making sure that the lights are on for that kid to see that cake that was bought for that kid to have friends come over and watch their favorite movie or show or whatever. So I just wonder, like, obviously you and I are, are fairly close in terms of like what we speak on like mental health stuff right so mm -hmm. the question i have for you is what does that do to you mentally if you can't make something happen for for your kids because like i said that that provider part of the conversation i feel like is important and doesn't get brought up nearly enough it uh it fucks with me it, it yeah. fucks me I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I, I pay every single bill that was accrued in that marriage, every one of them, um, including the car payment on a car that I don't even fucking use. Um, so at the end of the day, I can't do shit. I'm paying my bills and I'm paying somebody else's bills. You know, I spend, I, I send or try to at least 400 every check without going, hold on, dude. We'll play with that in a minute. Um, uh, without going through child support and all that shit. Um, and then, you know, I get the notice from the bank that like, hey, y'all are because the deal was she would pay her car payment. And the bank calls me and says, hey, y'all are two months behind on the payment. If you don't start making a payment, it's going to get repoed, which 
I'm not going to let happen because that fucks me. Um, so just this last month, I've spent almost two G's on sending it and making sure everything over here is taken care of while still maintaining my shit. And the fact that like, I don't ever have the money or the time because now I'm, I'm working overtime, working, you know, harvest and shit kicked in out here and, um, to go do shit. Like, right. Myself, like, I want to go take the kids out on the weekend. I don't want to be stuck in this fucking apartment all weekend long. Like, I want to go do shit and I want to take them out to the museum or the parks or the fucking zoos or the aquarium and shit. But I can't because I am paying on two houses basically yeah and and just to just to throw this out there as well uh i didn't mean to get like super personal or like try to like hit a landmine at all man um so just like hopefully that didn't hurt you just to talk about that because i know i know it fucks with you man and i and i know how hard you work just to make sure that you know that the lights are on and I think the most important part of this conversation is is awareness, is that the conversation that I try to always have when it comes to just men's health in general. And that being number one is how shitty. And, and no, again, for my listeners, this isn't to say that one side has it worse than others. But in a society of us trying to chase that equality conversation that the mom is going to be on the same level as the dad and co-parenting be a thing. We are in a society where men like, like Vince here are metaphorically and literally killing themselves to make sure those kids have a house over their, uh, a roof over their head, food in their stomachs. And again, not to say that single moms aren't doing the same thing, but I know a lot more single dads struggling to either get custody of their kids or being able to spend time with their kids because of how hard they work. You know, my dad paid all the bills, made sure my mom could go and do all the inappropriate things that she did with their money. And one day we come home to no electric being on because she didn't have to work because my dad worked. Um, and I'm sure Vince maybe a similar situation in your end where you're paying so much and sometimes the money that's supposed to go to something may or may not go to that something because of, you know, where can I stick this knife next kind of thing? Yeah. I'm sure it goes to where it needs to go. I just... It's a lot. Yeah, and, and I feel like I, I wish as a society we we can treat this as as it is, man. Like I hate seeing you struggle and obviously we've had the conversations of when you weren't in a bad part or a bad uh, point in what's going on. And I I say this every single time that I get a chance to say it, man, but men's suicide numbers should not be this high. It should not get to a point of men giving up because they can't see their kids, can't spend time with their kids, can't spend money that they want to spend other kids because of lack of co-parenting, lack of compassion between the two parties. Um, I pray for you every day. Um, I really do. I want nothing but the best for you and the kids and hate that the situation you're in with the ex, um, I, I hate that more than anything in the world because you're a genuine guy and I know you bust your ass just to get what you have now so just know that coming from me and, and I'm sure I speak for a couple others too that we do see you we do see how hard you're you're working on everything that you're doing man so don't think it's for nothing man because you're definitely seeing me. yeah And with that that being said, I need to take a drink of water really quick because. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, but yeah, man. Um, so you have a barbecue plan for for your birthday and have a bunch of friends come over. Um, and I know before we started recording, you were talking about possibly going to therapy again. Um, yep. So for you, I guess right now with riding the motorcycle when you can, that's your form of therapy. Yeah. And hopefully it helps you in, in some sense. It does. You know, riding in a truck, I can I can turn the music up, you know, to drown out and shit. And when it's me and, you know, I've got the motorcycle and I don't wear a helmet just because I know if I wear the helmet, if I do wreck, it's not going to save anything. I mean, it, my dad wore a helmet the day he died. So I just live this kind of, if it happens, it happens. And, uh, but the, the, just the sound of the motor when I'm going down the road and, you know, feeling the wind in my face, it, it opens up my clarity in my eyes a little more to where I can actually think shit through. You know, because you got hours sitting there, hours just getting after it. And, you know, in a truck, you can kind of disassociate or in a car, you can disassociate. But if you disassociate on that bike, you're done. So right. you got to stay a little more present in what's going on. So when I do hit that road, that's when I let, that's when I become the most clear and have the most thoughts because. I'm able to actually process through them. Right. So, man, um, before we uh, close out uh, today's session, um, as you know, I like to read quotes on whatever topic we're covering. Um, in this case, I found a quote just for men's mental health because, uh, again, very strong on that message, very strong on single dads and uh, the struggles that they have with their kids um, or just men in general. I think... Uh, we all need to do a better job at reaching out to each other and uh, making sure our fellow man is is good, man. But before I read that quote, um, do you have any closing words or like any quote that has kept you going these last couple months um, that you want to say to the listeners and all? No, not really. I don't have anything. Okay. Um, so for my listeners, I have a quote from a Mr. Joe Plum, and it says, uh, I'm a man. And no less of a man for admitting I'm not okay and for op openly talking about the constant struggle and battle I face with myself every single day. So for any of the, the fellow guys that do listen to my podcast that uh, I do have a pretty solid foundation in relationship with, um, speak out, man. It's the, it's the strongest thing that you can do regardless of what society tells you that a man is supposed to do. Yes, we are protectors. Yes, we are providers. But we are also human beings. We are also worthy of all good things. And we are worthy of love. So for all, all the people in my life, including you, Vince, I, I greatly appreciate you all. Um, I appreciate you being on today's podcast today, Vince. Uh, it's definitely been enlightening. A lot of new perspectives offered. So again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day for me. Yes, sir. Um, for all my listeners, uh, some really big things on the way, um, bigger platform that the podcast is going to be on whenever that does happen. Um, uh, stay tuned for more updates on the podcast just to see where everything is going to be at. Um, until next time, you can catch me at Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Um, until then, be, uh, be well. And as always, be gentle with yourselves. Until next time, take care, guys.